Thoracic Outlet Syndrome. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. It is based on the history and symptoms. The most common causes are cervical rep and anomalies of the scalenous muscle. So basically it is a neurovascular compression neuropathy of the brachial plexus in the thoracic outlet in the retroclavicular region with either a neurogenic or vascular etiology. It occurs more in females. So what is the thoracic outlet space? It is a space which is created by the clavicle, the first rib, the subclavius muscle, the costoclavicular ligament, the anterior scalene muscle. This space contains the subclavian vessels and the thoracic duct. Also, the lower trunk of the brachial plexus, C8 and T1. So there are two types, the neurogenic type and the vascular type. The neurogenic type is caused by compression of the neurovascular bundle as it passes over the first strap or through the scalene muscle. So what are the causes of compression? Cervical rep, vertebral transverse process, anomalies of the insertion of the scalene muscles, first rib malunion, fibrous bands, repetitive shoulder movement, extreme arm positions, abnormal pectoralis minor, weight lifting, rowing, and the swimming may be causes in the athlete. How about the vascular entity is caused by a compressed subclavian vessel or by an aneurysm? Where is the site of compression? Number one, at the plexus pass over the first strip. The source of compression of this syndrome it is usually the scalene triangle which is made of the anterior scalene anteriorly, the middle scalene posteriorly, and the edge of the first rib inferiorly. If you have an abnormal fibrous band on or near these two scalene muscles, if you have elongated C7 transverse process or cervical reps, it can contribute to this syndrome. The brachial plexus and the subclavian artery pass through the triangle, but the subclavian vein does not. Number two, under the clavicle by the subclavius tendon. Number three, underneath the conjoint tendon inserting into the coracoid process. How about the diagnosis? Symptoms are usually vague, pain, in the shoulder and neck, usually radiating to the forearm and the hand, parathesia radiating along the arm, loss of sensation of the little and ring fingers. There might be some vascular symptoms such as arterial ischemia, venous congestion, renal phenomena, change in color of hands, or chronically reduced pulse. I look for under nerve sensory changes and intrinsic weakness. And if the patient has cold intolerance or Reynolds phenomena, sometimes the patient will have a forward dropping shoulders posture. Differential diagnosis, C8 radiculopathy, or under compression at the elbow, combination of weakness of the median and the under nerve innervated muscles may confirm a more proximal injury of the brachial plexus. If the patient have no neck pain and no radicular pain but have C8, T1, sensory and motor changes, that will exclude C8 
radiculopathy. Always be aware of double crush syndrome that involves the carpal tunnel and thoracic outlet syndrome. Just be aware that compression of the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve can occur from the compression at the thoracic outlet. The sensory loss occurs on the medial aspect of the forearm and the medial third of the hand, which is ulnar and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. Both come from the medial cord. How about provocative tests? Three tests. Edson, Wright, and Rose. The provocative tests have a high rate of false positive and are of limited clinical value if used alone. So Edson test is the one that's commonly used. So you're going to abduct, extend, and externally rotate the arm while feeling the radial pulse. Also rotate the head towards the testing arm. You may also extend the neck. This test is positive if the pulse disappears with reproduction of symptoms. How about the right test? Is abduction, extended rotation of the arm with the neck rotated away, and that will lead to a loss of pulse and reproduction of symptoms. The Roos test, elevated arm stress test, east. In the Roos test, raise both arm up and hold them for about a minute. Then you rapidly open and close the fingers for about three minutes. The test is positive if you have reproduction of pain, numbness of the shoulders, as well as fatigue. Imaging, cervical spine may show a cervical rep. The chest X-ray may show a bankost tumor, which is apical lung tumor that can put pressure on the brachial plexus, and it can cause other nerve symptoms. EMG and nerve conduction studies, the results are usually not very helpful. Vascular studies may identify a vascular form of thoracic outlet syndrome. How about the treatment? Physiotherapy. Strengthen the shoulder girdle muscles. This is usually the first treatment. You need to have a proper posture. You need to modify activity. Don't have the shoulder sag down. You really need to have therapy to correct these postural imbalances. How about surgery? The decompression indicated in cases of intractable pain, neurological deficit, or persistent vascular insufficiency, in addition to failure of non-operative treatment. So what type of surgery? You're going to resect the first strap or the cervical rep if present. You will release or excise the anterior and the middle scalene muscle and excise any abnormal structure. Surgery can be done through transaxillary or supraclavicular approaches. There is a 90% good to excellent result with transaxillary first strap resection. Vascular procedure may be done to help in cases of vascular causes of this syndrome. I hope you liked that video and thank you for listening. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.